Hey, thanks uh, for uh, ironically chatting with me on um, for PVVT, PVV chat on uh, on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Totally appropriate. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> sure. Just like on one of these shows, and this is just not in the most incredible location, but yeah. How's, <laughs> how's it going? Well, anyways, hey, con congratulations on uh, PVT uh, chat. Uh, I'm with you. It's it's actually funny. It was because um, just a couple days ago, I was uh, talk talking via Zoom with uh, with someone who apparently was in your movie called Assholes. Uh, who, who? Jack Dunphy. Oh, I love Jack. What were you talking with Jack about? Oh, he has a short film that's actually coming out in uh, Slam Dance, one of his animated short films, and, and and he was and he was telling me about uh, starring in, in your in your film. So I was like, going, oh, that's that's pretty ironic because uh, because I'm I'm speaking to you like a couple of days later. So <laughs> yeah, Jack, I, I, Jack's great. I love Jack. <laughs> well, anyways, hey, so let, let's talk about PVT chat here. So what initially attracted you to a project like this? The first thing was the script. I, I had met Ben um, on another movie that he wasn't directing, but he was the AD of. And I, and you know, we didn't, I don't actually think we got along on that set. I think he would agree. It wasn't like we, it wasn't like we clashed, but I think both of us sort of, looked at each other and went, oh, I wouldn't be friends with that guy. For whatever reason, we're, we're great friends now and totally love each other. But so he, but, and he told me he was working on a script about a guy who was obsessed with cam, a cam girl. And I, and I thought the premise alone was interesting, especially because it's a, it's one of, it's a, something that's not as explored as it could be in cinema. And so anything that has that texture, I'm immediately sort of, my my attention is sharpened so then a number of years like three or four years after that short film uh oliver david who produced the movie sent me the script and i just thought wow this is good you know and the character on the page had dimension and there was a lot going on and i i auditioned and he wanted me to do it and yeah i mean it mainly was the script and then ben who i have grown to really appreciate and love and thinks a very stimulating, smart guy. So how did you want to approach this uh, this character of yours on um, PVT, PVT chat um, here? Did, uh, did you actually have to uh, like go into a little bit of research for your role? Well, it's an interesting question um, and uh, idea of research uh, when it comes to acting because they're definitely, yeah, I mean, did I have to do a lot of research for this? No, I had I had admittedly seen Cam Girls, so I knew what that was. Actually, the research for me came, was more with Ben teaching me how to gamble, which we actually did a lot on set. A number of those scenes, I'm actually gambling his money and losing it. <laughs> um, but, I would say often just reading the script and learning the lines is enough research because in doing that, you're like metabolizing the story and the character. And a lot of acting, at least the way I like to approach it is really using myself. So it's like unconsciously in the process of working on the script and then the bulk of this happens actually on set in the moment you're like sort of turning up parts of yourself that are appropriate for the character and turning down the parts of yourself that are inappropriate for the character and so all of this sort of is the research um yeah i didn't have to actually just sort of live as a lonely cam girl addicted guy to do the part because that person is in me you know the lonely guy who is obsessed with the woman that he can't get is just in me I think it's in a lot of people so it doesn't actually require like a traditional research the way it might if you're playing a historical figure and there were literally mannerisms that you needed to get down so that you could be believed as someone that people have some preconceived understanding of so when you actually approach that, uh, because a huge part of the scenes is you interacting with a computer screen. 
Um, how, how did Ben actually handle that? Were you basically just pretending to act like you're um, against a computer screen, against a camera or a computer, or basically there, were, there was some kind of um, interaction um, but through his direction? Fortunately, he, we set it up so that we were, Julia and I were actually video chatting. Uh, and that, I think that that's the only way I could see the movie working. If I, if I had to imagine her end of every conversation, I don't think that the scenes would have the immediacy that they needed. So what they did was Julia's like dom cam room, her dom dungeon room was actually like in one side of the apartment that we were shooting and I was in the other and she was on her computer and I was on mine and they were set up. I, I don't really remember, you know, we didn't have Zoom at the time. Maybe it was, I don't remember what program we were using, but it was one and it was just happening. So we were actually just the way you and I are. Ben was sometimes shooting me. If Ben were in the room making the movie of this interview, he'd be shooting me. He'd be shooting you. And so, but in the movie, you'd be Julia. And so sometimes that camera was on the computer screen. Julia was actually on my computer screen. And sometimes he would go into the other room and shoot her or shoot me. You know, that he, it was just like shooting a traditional scene, except for the, my scene partner was on the computer. And for her, I was on the computer. Uh, and it worked quite well. There was some sound reverb sometimes, but far less technical difficulty than you would imagine given that sort of idiosyncratic setup. So how was it acting alongside uh, Julia or, you know, op opposite to Julia th throughout the entire film? It was a pleasure. I mean, Julia is a fantastic performer and actress in person. And she is somebody who has a lot of depth and dimension to her personality in life. And I think why people respond to her as a like a star and a, and a is that she's able to share that with a camera and be who she is in life on camera, and that's fascinating. You know, she is brings her whole humanity to a role, so it was really fun. I mean, it was you know when you're working with someone who's great like that, it, it doesn't feel like acting. It doesn't feel there doesn't feel forced. You don't I don't have to like pretend that this person is a magnetic other. She just is, and that makes my job easy. So this is all great. You know, Julie's, Julie's great. Tell, tell me, um, was it difficult uh, with your nude or masturbation scenes um, for, for the film? Because, you know, some, some, sometimes some people could be very uncomfortable with basically be, being filmed uh, through sure. the- I mean that's yeah of course I mean I think part of the reason why Ben decided to use me and another actor is that I'm not uncomfortable with it you know I I, I like extreme material in cinema I, I like material that that is out of the ordinary or pushes limits as an audience member and even though I I think in life as Peter you know I have modesty I don't I don't feel exhibitionistic in life but as an actor, I have somehow managed to remove modesty from the equation because I'm very sensitive as an audience member to actors who I perceive as having modesty in their performance. And it really takes me out and it makes me, it makes me uncomfortable, actually. Like I then, if I see someone who is doing a scene where they have to be nude, but I sense that they don't want to be, I'm like, ugh, I don't actually want to watch this movie. So it's my job then I feel if I am taking on a role that requires me to say, do something very intimate and explicit. My job is to just do that fully and with like an open heart and like really not feel modest because I think that then the audience member will be able to really kind of take in that action as as something that isn't that almost isn't explicit or period like because there's a very human element to a ma the a moment of masturbating and and i cinema for a lot of reasons many of them just due to people's fear and modesty especially in america around nudity it's not explored so it was exciting interesting for me to feel like okay like let's see what this is like and yeah, I just, you just have to commit. <laughs> you just have to really commit. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta commit. <laughs> so, 
So that so I'm assuming the nude masturbation scenes were was not the most difficult thing you had to do. I'm a, I'm actually saying it's probably the computer trying to trying to stomp yeah. on the computer who was far more difficult. Right, right. Well, you actually bring up a good point. It's like I think that the moments of the explicit moments in a movie are get a lot of attention, but in a way they're they're some of the easiest ones. Like it's much more for me it was much harder sometimes to like tap into this character's like joy because on the one hand like he's like I like was like as Peter I'm very connected to like wow Jack's sad I'm like I am sad at playing him sometimes because it's like I am lonely think feeling this guy's loneliness was hard but then Ben all to his credit really wanted me to to not only be like a sort of cynical guy but to have a lot of boyish enthusiasm and naivete and sometimes it was if I had just done a scene where I'm lonely and sad, it was hard to then like be giddy and exciting and excited. And that just kind of is more challenging than than what you would think might be challenging, like the nude stuff. Um, so it's, it's, you know, and the other thing, I think I've said this before, but I'll say it again, like it, it's interesting how as, a, an Amer as a, I think Americans to generalize a little are so, comfortable with movies and tv that show murder or, or or anger you know but 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 nudity and masturbating even though it's like a far more common everyone is with themselves nude at some point of the day that does it feel more oh wow that's that that seems to be like more intense than like the movies with like a lot of killing um, which you know i don't have I'll just let that statement linger. I don't really, I don't actually have a great answer about that. And it's much talked about, but it is, it is interesting. <laughs> well, Peter, um, after doing PVT chat and um, talking to your friend about assholes, uh, I, I, I like this sort of like out of the box type, type of films. Are you tend to be more attracted to the, this type of uh, filmmaking? Um. The simple answer would be, yeah, but that's not to say that I don't love things that are very traditional and, and, and don't try to do anything unique or original. Um, I like both. I, I really do. I think right now with my own filmmaking, I, I'm probably more interested in movies that you would categorize as unconventional. But as an actor, I have no preference, really. I, I love to do anything where I find the character interesting and the collaborators interesting and the script interesting, no matter what the genre or the ethos of the movie is. Um, Excellent. Well, let me wrap it up with uh, one more question with you, Peter. Obviously, no. you know, we're, we're chatting via Zoom right now and because of the, uh, you know, crazy times that we're living in, how are you staying sane and creative during this time? Um, what if I told you I'm totally insane and I've given up creativity? Uh, JK, if this is in print, JK. Um, I find this time, I mean, I think that had you asked me this question months ago, my answer might be different, right? But I think we've been in this new mode for long enough now that I have gotten used to it. Um, and, you know, I'm a lot of my work is solitary work, um, whether it's writing or, or preparing material as an actor for a, a job or an audition, it's, it does, a lot of it does happen um, alone. So it hasn't, I think I've been less affected than other people who go to an office and have a traditional, a more traditional job that really does require interacting. Um, yeah, I mean, I think my answer is really, it's it's difficult to be creative under any circumstance. So you can either use your circumstances to inspire you and keep the creative flame lit, or even if we weren't in lockdown, there'd be reasons to not um, pursue your artistic ambitions. Those are always difficult to pursue and there's all they're always challenging. Um, in some way it doesn't the world will always also be challenging and being creative will be challenging right along with it so i think my level of ch challenge is actually what it always is
Excellent answer. Well, hey, thank you very much, Peter, for uh, for talking to me about uh, PVT Chat. And Thanks I can't wait to uh, talk to you again for your next project. Me too. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for chatting.